using the remainder and factor theorem. As we advance to higher powered expressions in algebra, meaning expressions of a higher degree, we find it harder and harder to find the factors of polynomial expressions, and this should make a lot of sense to us. For instance, this quadratic trinomial expression, x squared minus 2x minus 15, would be a lot easier to factor than this cubic polynomial, x cubed plus 3x squared minus 16x plus 12. And related to those expressions, this quadratic equation, x squared minus 2x minus 15 equals 0, is probably going to be easier to solve than this cubic equation, x cubed plus 3x squared minus 16x plus 12 equals 0. And what we do in algebra is work our tools and skills to handle tasks with increasing complexity and difficulty, and that's what we're doing in exploring the use of the remainder and factor theorem in this lesson. And fortunately, there is something we can use, the remainder theorem of algebra, to make the process easier. And this is the theorem. If a polynomial f of x is divided by x minus k, then the remainder is r equals f of k, f of k meaning a function of a certain number that in this formula we call k. And practically, what that means is that if we take this variable x in this cubic polynomial, and that variable is found in three places, the cubic term, the quadratic term, and the linear term, and replace that variable with any real number, and in our first attempt we'll replace x with negative 2, and what we'll find is the answer to the question, what will our remainder be if we divide this polynomial x cubed plus 3x squared minus 16x plus 12 by the binomial x plus 2? The key thing to observe here is that the signs are opposite of one another. Again, you have to pick a number so that the sign will be opposite the sign of the number in the dividend, in this case the dividend being x plus 2. The signs must be opposites. So we'll insert negative 2 into the expression every place there is an x. And here's the expression with negative 2 replacing x. I find that it helps when using formulas, especially formulas with multiple variables and negative signs, to have parentheses prepared into which to place the numbers for the variables. It helps to avoid mistakes. And here's the next step, finding the values of each of the terms. So we have negative 8 plus 12 plus 32 plus 12. And that total is 48. So based on our use of the remainder theorem, we know two things. First, we know that x plus 2 is not a factor of x cubed plus 3x squared minus 16x plus 12. We know that because the remainder is a number other than 0, in this case 48. And secondly, we know that after dividing x cubed plus 3x squared minus 16x plus 12 by the, tri by the binomial x plus 2, the remainder of that division is 48 divided by x plus 2. We don't get the entire answer by using the remainder theorem, but we do get the remainder, and that can help us a lot. We just tried x plus 2 as a factor, so now we'll try another factor. Now we'll try uh, another factor first by asking the question, is x minus 2 a factor of x cubed plus 3x squared minus 16x plus 12? And to evaluate x minus 2 as a factor using the remainder theorem, we change the sign of the negative 2 of the divisor to the opposite sign. So for this attempt, positive 2 goes in as our input value. Here's the expression with the 2 in place of the x, and that comes to 8 plus 12 minus 32 plus 12, and that equals 0. And this lets us know two things. First, the answer to our earlier question is yes, that the binomial x minus 2 is in fact a factor of x cubed plus 3x squared minus 16x plus 12. And secondly, we know that the remainder of x cubed plus 3x squared minus 16x plus 12 divided by the binomial x minus 2 is 0. And now knowing that x minus 2 is a factor, we could divide it using long division, synthetic division, or by using the box method to continue factoring the expression. Let's apply the remainder and factor theorem to a problem I recently gave my students on a test. Which of the following divisions will produce a remainder of minus 23 over x plus 2? 
This could be up to four long division or synthetic division problems before we get our answer. It could even be more than that if we make an error and don't come up with that remainder the first time around. But with the remainder theorem, we can lessen our work considerably. We take the opposite sign of the dividend, the opposite of 2, and that will be negative 2. And if we replace the x's in the dividend with negative 2, we'll be able to find the remainder without having to do long division or synthetic division. And that will give us this, 3 times negative 2 cubed plus 2 times negative 2 squared minus 6 times negative 2 plus 1. And simplifying, this would be 3 times negative 8 plus 2 times 4 plus 12 plus 1, and that's negative 24 plus 8 plus 13, which equals negative 3. And since we need a remainder of negative 23, a is not our correct answer, so we cross off A. Now, that was quite a bit easier than long or even synthetic division. Let's come down to answer B and try the same technique. That will give us 2 times negative x cubed plus negative 2 squared plus 3 times negative 2 minus 5. And that simplifies to 2 times negative 8 plus 4 minus 6 minus 5, which simplifies to negative 16 plus 4 minus 11, which equals negative 23. And since that negative 23 matches our remainder of negative 23 over x plus 2, that makes b our correct answer, which we circle as correct. This way of finding remainders is much shorter, plus avoids many opportunities for errors in calculations. Now to summarize, in our lesson today we've gone over the basics of the remainder theorem of algebra. We showed how the, the theorem is useful in helping to factor more complex polynomial expressions than quadratic expressions such as cubic, quartic, and even larger expressions. And we also discussed the related factor theorem, and that is that if we find a polynomial factor with a remainder of zero, we have discovered a factor of the polynomial expression being divided, or the dividend. And the factor theorem is truly just a special case of the remainder theorem. This has been Using the Remainder and Factor Theorem. Thanks for viewing.